Alright, so I made a video of this car a while ago. I was trying to get the check engine light to come on so I could diagnose the problem. It was before I put it away for winter, I was having an issue where I would drive and if I got into high RPMs, it would just die out randomly and the check engine light would come on and stay on. And then after that, VTEC wouldn't engage and it would kind of just run awkwardly, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Because it would just kind of hesitate and it would run more rich than it normally does even on the stock ECU so the other day I took it out because it was nice and got into high RPMs and I finally got the check engine light to come on again and it ran me a code 17 because this is running I'm still running OD1 on this converted it all so I had to do the check engine light flashes so yeah code 17 and that came back for a vehicle speed sensor issue so further investigation on this I'll pop the hood over here so after trying to diagnose the issue it went down and took all this apart went down to the speed sensor and I have a cracked ear on the side, the little tab that bolts to the transmission housing. So I'm wondering if that's the issue because it does have slight side to side play and high RPMs obviously between shifts it's going to jerk a little bit so I'm wondering if that's thrown off something with a computer because it's getting a different, it's, I think it's like an electromagnet um, wave that it gives it or whatever. So. They could be throwing it off, and hopefully that's kind of the issue I've been trying to fight. So, I went and ordered a new one, well, a used one, on eBay. Because I don't think you can buy these brand new anymore. But, yeah, this one doesn't have a broken ear. So, hopefully this one is still good. And, we'll put it in and see what happens. So, yeah, I'm going to move this up here in the light it is kind of dark in here for the camera I think I just discovered what was wrong with my camera it was kind of making all the colors awkward so move this up there and start pulling this thing apart it was kind of cool I'm sitting here working on this and the UPS guy pulls up and I've never talked to him before and he's like hey that's pretty cool how many things how many of these things do you got I saw the CRX the four-wheel drive wagon and saw me working on this it's like yeah I used to have a I think he said a 96 EK that he did some motor work to and whatnot so that's pretty cool usually around here everyone hates imports and they kind of just give you a dirty look if you drive one around so it's kind of nice meeting someone that actually likes imports for once so if you're not familiar with swapping an EF with a B series you have to either use the factory speed sensor which is a kind of a it's a smaller version of this I guess the cap it's like a little circle and it just goes down to the transmission I couldn't get mine out of the original transmission so I bought one of these and this is off a of DA Integra that put that in there and it worked because this is the one out of the type R trans and obviously the you have to do some wiring and whatnot if you want to get this to work. I honestly don't even know how. I haven't looked it up because I just went right to putting one of these in when I swapped my car. But essentially, these work, and apparently the stock OEM D series ones go into the transmission as well. But I've never done it myself, so don't take my word for it. But I'll get the other one out, and you got all you got to do is loop the lines right here because that way it's pushing fluid through and there's a cable that goes down through here and this little pin will lock uh, which way whatever way it goes but this little pin when it goes in there's a little um like a section on the line that goes in here and this clips and holds it in place but yeah so I'll pull the other one out and show you that. So your speed sensor is going to be way down here. Right there. 
and that you can kind of see at the tip of my light that's where that tall little 10 millimeter bolt is and that's what holds the ear down into the transmission so yeah and that's the little cable that runs down to it you can kind of see the clip right there under the boot but kind of a pain in the butt to get to with all this in the way but i'll get that out and hopefully swap the new one in So here's that broken ear. I kind of took a minute to get out because when I went to pick it up, I got jammed between the speed sensor and the transmission. And if I pulled the speed sensor out, that would have fell in the hole into my trans and that would not be a fun day. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'll probably have to take that cable off. I was just trying to get it all in one piece to show you how it goes together, but you can kind of see from here. It just goes on there, this boot. I mean, that's supposed to go over the clip, but I can never get over the clip, so it just kind of sits there. But yeah, you can see a little gear down there. And there's a little ridge that the pin goes into once it's in the sensor itself. And that little spline right there, there's a little keyway that has to line up inside this. Onto, you can't really. Well, maybe you can. But it goes down in there, and that's what gives you your sig signal as it spins. I guess it gives like an electromagnetic wave or something that the computer picks up electronically. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is where it broke off. You can't see that. My camera's not focusing. I use my phone for the majority of all these videos, but so yeah, this was broken and I could grab this and kind of spin it quite a bit when it was down in the transmission. So I'm hoping that's all the issue was. So the, obviously this one has everything all together in it. Oh yeah, I'm going to swap this hose over because this always, this is pushing fluid whenever it's spinning so we don't connect these two um, these two inlet and outlets it's just gonna push a bunch of transmission fluid out of there so that's all you gotta do nothing fancy all right so that's all put together so we'll slap it back in and see what happens i'm also going to put a tiny bit of blue loctite on the threads of this just so I don't have to worry about tightening it too much because I really don't know how this cracked so see what happens but just a little dab on there give me more peace at mind that it won't back out and I don't have to crank on it to keep it in there yeah so once you put this back in you kind of just got to spin the sensor around to get it to go on that key and then and get my camera to focus. This just goes right over this right here. So once you got that in, make sure you give it a pull to make sure it's actually locked in. And I'll do it with both hands, but you know what you know what I'm trying to say. But give it a tug and then put it back in. Bolt it up. And obviously when you're putting it back into the the hole right there, you gotta kinda spin it back and forth so the gear goes on. Otherwise you're gonna just fight it if you're trying to push it straight through. Just wiggle it back and forth as you're going down there. The hilly cut gears will mesh up eventually. Uh, went right back in. I'm gonna get that nut on there, or that bolt, with a little bit of Loctite and Go for a test drive, make sure everything's working. Hopefully that solves the check engine light. And learn from my mistake. So this is this is the old one. I'll show you this clip if I can. Um, when you put this clip on, there's that smaller radius or whatever, and you get the larger one. You want the smaller one to go into the slot. 
because that way it locks it in. You can see how far it is in there. But if you do it this way, it doesn't go in as far. So it's not going to lock that little ridge on the cable. So make sure you do it that way. Save you time. All right, so it's all back together. Then when I was putting the pin back in through there, because I had to pull the sensor back out, I dropped the little clip that goes over the cable, and I can't find it. So hopefully it didn't go in my transmission. But I put a magnet down there and didn't get anything. So we'll see. My transmission might explode, but I'm just gonna send it because the only way else to tell is to drop the trains. So, start this up, and then see if it's working. Take it around the block quick before I go down the interstate. Yeah, it's going through the gears at least, so we'll see what happens. in here revving it it doesn't seem to really bother it at all it seems all normal though under load high rpm that'll drop we'll get like about 12 on the afr and just kind of just bog out it, it seems like when driving it's like i just take my foot right off the throttle and it just bogs down while i'm on the throttle so i'm wondering Maybe it's just that VTEC on a gasket or or the screen or if I have something else kind of another sensor or something that's going bad. I mean just about every sensor on here is brand new because they're all junk from HMO or cracked. So I'll have to do some more diagnostics with this. They are under no load. <laughs> up at all so let's see what happens order some more parts and you can tell the VTEC solenoid gasket is leaking so it might be the culprit for the issues I'm having but that's gonna be about it for this one kind of a informational video more than anything I guess I still haven't solved my issue, but at least I got that new speed sensor in, or new to me, not broken speed sensor. So that's one issue down. I don't know why this thing just wants to have issues all of a sudden after running fine for like two years, or at least a year after I figured out all the bugs. I mean, just about every sensor on here I had to replace. This is old, but that's um, the Type R intake manifold that I put on here last summer so maybe I'll replace that or clean it at least the map sensor 
but it shouldn't really have any issues with throttle because of that, so we'll find out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more and keep up with the builds. Got plenty of projects to take care of.